get to say only one word? Okay. It's not like a silent thing. You have to tell a story with three words, basically. Okay. And it's like one word per act, essentially. But no, like, it's not a silent movie. You just act, but without... Yeah, like through the three words, basically. Once we put the, the scenes together, it basically should give us the, the message or the theme in the end, like through our performance or whatever, through what we put on, that message should be put across. So we'll have to come up with a story and let's see. Damn, it's the wheel is turning. Mm, just keep it really simple and then still deliver. Typing and just like put it in the ashtray. Yeah, I have to do it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, thank you. We even have a prop. The okay. So, um, act like you're doing the mouse, the mouse thing. Mm -hmm. Now we want to figure out where she's going to be set up as our her Please. character is a. How about what? that one? And then I'm facing another direction. What, like an ant. Caught. So give it like a moment before, you know, when she says downloading, you're, you it's kind of like popping between. up on the screen and then, boom, I'm caught. And then you grab me by my arm and, wait. I think I should grab you, caught. Mm-hmm. That's exactly oh, what yeah. I do. And then once that happens, I'll pick the button right here. And then I'm thinking maybe I should kick the door down or something. Oh, yeah. To come That's in here because yeah. okay. there's no... Two bus. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Kick the door, yeah. So should we do like a dry run or are we cool? Our theme is sometimes in life, when you expect something to be free, it isn't. Okay. Tell us where we are. We are... She's a computer hacker who makes her living off of pirating movies and music. And this is a FBI building. We're in an office. We're an anti-piracy task force. And so, action. Are you supposed to be in? No. Okay. You're the one that's gonna say action, then you do you do the action, uh, Julie. Okay. Ready? Action. Mm. Downloading. <laughs> Caught. Freeze. Cut. Don't stop until the director says cut. Cut. Okay. Let's try it one more time. Okay. All right. What, uh, I like your character. <clears throat> I don't know. Cut. If, oh, well, you know what? Keep it running. I don't know whether she's been after this girl for months and now she's so glad to get her. I want to know something about your character. Okay. I want to know, it's very important, You're, I, I got you, I don't know maybe how much, whether you're doing this for the thrill of doing it or for the money. For the money I'm, I'm distributing. Uh, now I'm, don't tell me, okay. you've got to find a way to play it. You have to help her as the director how to play it. Now for you, I don't know if you've been after this girl for a long time or Holy Anna, you just happened to stumble on it. You're not giving me anything. You have to give me a character, mm -hmm. a person, okay? And in your action and the way you are handling it will tell me. We need more. <coughs> I'll give you more. I didn't get I didn't get what it was. <coughs> we have to her to do it. Okay? Now, you're not giving me anything. Okay? Maybe you should come into the scene, leave her alone in the scene that she finds it, and when she maybe she has to call you. Okay? 
so you give more, more of a, a broader view of it. But she needs the moment to let me know. It's like the guy who says, you know, you're just a bum. No, I got to know something about you. I like the cigarette. That's a good piece of business. Okay, but when you're going to dump it, you know? I just, can I? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You took the cigarette and went, like I would have said, oh boy, I nailed it. You understand? You give me a physical action, but you just took the cigarette and put it out. You know? And, and you didn't give me any real, you didn't give me any real, uh, real sense. I like what you did with the, with the cigarette, but use it. Use it as a character. Same thing with her. You know. Can I give them a yeah. uh, Can I give them a suggestion, like what to add more to yes, just absolutely. bring their characteristics? I have also a gesture that I want to ask about. <clears throat> something to catch mm -hmm. so you're like agitated like you have to like so you're waiting for some good news and you're just like all in your mind like in that computer mm -hmm. like that right mm -hmm. so, so that cool. you both have a for sure so and the agitation mm -hmm. and very, very agitated like sure. but then after you uh, when you say cut you be like so happy <gasps> cut, cut, cut. like this like more exactly. okay you so got frustration it. and then happiness. <laughs> and then with you. I have an idea for a gesture, but I don't know, now. should I say it now or just do it? Well, what's your idea? <laughs> it's kind of like, well, after like, I do a cigarette mm -hmm. and like, press and then I, I do downloading and then I'm like... Yeah, good. Like, or you could just money, start yeah, counting. Because yeah, that's the, because, huh? I was thinking like counting your money just to show why, you, why you're doing it. But mm -hmm. how can I count my, like this? Means yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you're, you're, she's about to get him on this. So yeah. you're going to be like, hey. <coughs> hmm? That works. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so then, then like, we've like, established like, what you're doing because this. Because how do you do money? It's like almost like comical. Like you, when you just bust her, like you'd be like, you know what I mean? Like freeze when she oh. Freeze. <laughs> cool. Wait, when, when he says freeze? Yeah, it's like a, you're thinking of all the, that monies and stuff. And mm -hmm. then now you're busted. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, that at that time. Place. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see it. <coughs> okay. Ready? Action. Downloading. Cut. Freeze. Cut. Well, I would say that played a lot better. <coughs> Wouldn't you? <coughs> you don't think so? No, sir. I think so. Huh? I think it played a lot better, and I think uh, 
it was interesting that you both almost picked up the same the same kind of action what she did when she discovered it when you did when you discovered it which would be kind of an interesting okay that would make it play all right very good come on back this time it really worked okay i got the sense i got the sense that you really didn't need more than one word to get it across okay i have one that I thought about, uh, except I don't know how to define the theme. Okay? It's a girl lying in a hospital bed and someone standing over her. And the girl is obviously in very bad shape. And Someone else walks in, and the person who's standing over the bed looks at her and says, accident. Okay? And the injured party lying in the bed looks at the person who is standing over and says, drunk. <clears throat> and the person who had entered says, out. Person who entered out. the. Yes, telling the, the person to get out. Right? Telling the person who is over who, who, who was a drunk. Who was accused of being drunk. Uh, to get out. Oh, uh, so actually, the person overlooking the person who's laying in, the, in bed is the guilty person. Huh? Yeah. It's the one who was drunk. Who was drunk and did it, yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> so that what you have, what I'm looking for here, is relationship, by body relationship. When you're doing a scene, okay, you want to know what your relationship is with the other characters, and you have to significantly play that. Okay. So, here's somebody who is standing over this person who is lying there, obviously badly injured, okay? And how the two are meeting tells us what maybe their relationship is. This is more than just maybe a person who hit some stranger while they were drunk, but maybe somebody that was in the car with them when they were driving drunk. We got this so far? Mm -hmm. All right. These are the things you have to think through when you're playing something. All right? Now, the person who comes in obviously also has a relationship with these two. Follow? Okay? So, why don't we play it as a guy standing over the bed? Who is his father? Maybe the father of the girl? But what's our theme? Sometimes in life, if you drink, you'll get hurt. <clears throat> Sometimes in life, one bad act can disrupt an entire family. One bad event. Right. So, that must mean that the person coming in has to be either the mother or a sister. Okay? And the person lying who has been injured has to have a relationship with the guy who's standing over her. Maybe it's her father, maybe it's her husband. But now comes timing of how you look at one another, when you look at one another. Most of you make the mistake of timing, of when to play a moment, and that comes with the director. Remember, the writer creates it, 
the director interprets it and the actor makes it happen. Okay? So you have to then feel how you are related to all these people and that will come across. And the challenge is to make it come across with your body language, with your emotions. Okay? So, if the person who's standing over the body, Nick, over the person is injured, how does he behave when the person who came in says, after the girl says, drunk? When the girl says, out? Regret? So there's a drama here. You know, maybe he'll he'll try to not to move. Maybe she'll grab him and physically throw him out, and then go back to the girl, which will tell me what their relationship is. People, okay. you're telling a story. It has to have a middle, okay, and it has to have an end. But more importantly, <clears throat> it's got to have a beginning. Reacts. Okay? You had an exposition of this girl who's getting a thing. Boom. She hits it. That's your first act. When she finally finds something. Okay? When we come here, second act, we have to see you, what you're doing here, that you're tracing her. You follow me? <coughs> okay? And of course, the result is that she's going to end up arrested. Now, if you had to shoot it and cut it properly, what you should do is see her doing, okay, and then cut to her trying to catch her. Now, come back to her following it, and then go back to her stamping down, and she got her. Are we following each other? Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Partially. Huh? Partially. Oh, because you're not listening. When you edit this together and you want to send out a story, when you see her trying to beat it, she's smoking a cigarette. Now, you cut to her, the FBI girl, looking to try and catch her. Now you cut back to her getting it, okay? Mm -hmm. Now you cut back to the FBI girl, you got her. Now you build tension and you build everything. What's missing? Come on, guys. What is missing? The result? Well, the result is that you go and arrest her. What's missing considering the milieu? <clears throat> Him! He gave us nothing. He's just some dude standing there. What's his relationship to her? What's his relationship to her? What's his relationship about what she's doing? Is he fucking upset because she's been after this girl for forever and she's never going to get her? Does he... Does he when, when we cut from her, okay, when we cut from her to her, do we see him look over her shoulder going like this? Uh, he'll never, you know? And then when she does it, what's his reaction? You didn't give me anything. You didn't think about creatively your three people in this little play. You have to let me know who you are, what your character is, and how you play out the story. You, do we understand each other? Yes. Yeah, you were just standing there waiting for your cue to go play Clint Eastwood and, and kick down the door, you know? And what's the first thing he would have done when he went in? You didn't even think that through. When he went in, he slammed 
the computer costs so she doesn't have a chance to erase. No, you know why? You're not thinking the story through. You're not creating it. I don't care how you interpret it, but you want to know something? There's more to nothing than nothing. And that's the part that makes it look like you're lost. Now, I think what you did, Gee, when you went over, mm -hmm. that was one of the things you had to see, was that he was bombing real bad. Because he wasn't thinking about anything. He just followed the directions. He thought that the focus was... Nobody just follows a direction. You're part of a story-making thing here. You have to think it through. There's three people up on the stage. They all have to be part of whatever is intricately right. intertwined in the story. This happens, then that happens, then this happens, and that happens. And you as actors have to know how you cue, how you're, port, how you're, how you're becoming part of it. You're filmmakers. You gotta think things through. We understand? Yes. Yeah, you didn't give me anything. I don't know who the hell you were. I didn't know what your relationship was to her. Did you ever see a movie with Eastwood playing a cop? What his relationship is to his captain, what his relationship is. Even in those films, they know enough to have relationships. What? Who is who is who and who is what? And you didn't think it through. You go, boom, yeah, I got a gun on her. No, the first thing she would do is kill the, the computer. Wipe it out, maybe. Or attempt it. You never thought about why you didn't really think about what you were doing in the scene. Not easy, is it? This business of movie making. It calls for thought, creativity and thought. That's right. The second time, yeah, when you went, eh, yeah, I bought it, okay? And you also, when you got into it, but there should have been something between you two, you know? Maybe you would have come in and look over and she'd have done this to block you from looking at a computer. <laughs> But send me a message. Send me something. Be creative. Okay. <laughs> Come on, <Clay. laughs> That's very nice of you. Free shit. <clears throat> you have to think it through. And you're an actor, and you're doing a TV show, you're doing Law and Order. Let me tell you something. You're expected to come in and give something. Nobody's gonna really, everybody's in a hurry to get it down. If you wanna do something creative and you say, why didn't he cast me? Because you probably went in and read it like, oh yeah, I break through the door. You gotta do something creative. And many times you're not gonna get the guidance from a director, especially if you're working t uh, TV. They expect you to be a professional. When you come in, you're gonna give them some shit. Got it? Now, if you're working a big film, maybe you'll be lucky enough to have a director that'll talk to you. But many times, you have to come, and you have to be, I'll give you an example. Anybody here know who uh, Edward Albert Jr. was? Edward Albert, Edward Albert Jr. starred in a film with Goldie Hawn called Butterflies Are Free. He played the blind boy. And he got nominated for an Academy Award for it. He was the lead in a film that I made called A Time to Die. We were seven months in Europe shooting it. Mario Puzo and I wrote the script. Okay. 
and Edwin only had maybe six weeks on the picture, he said, I want to come with you when you're looking at locations. He said, I have nothing else that I'm working on, and I want to get into the mood. This was, and Rex Harrison was his co-star who had just won an Academy Award for My Fair Lady. So there was that competitive edge. And he said something interesting to me. He said, Matt, you don't have to really work. Now here's a guy who's been nominated for the Academy Award. He's made a zillion movies, young, very good looking. And he, he followed me all over Europe. We'd have to take a car together, drive. And he said, when you want to direct me in a scene, he said, just communicate with me. He said, tell me, he said, I have such a thing about old movies. He said, if there's a scene, just tell me how you would see a famous star playing it. So I tried it one day. I said, this scene, you have to play it like you're Jimmy Cagney. And he went in and he played it really well, but he didn't look anything like Jimmy Cagney. Then another time, he said, okay, I said, this scene where you're really running, they're running, they're chasing, he has a, a bullet in his head from the war, it was a World War II. I said, in this scene, you're Mo from the Three Studios. He said, I got it, because I needed a lot of energy. He didn't look anything like Mo from the Three yeah. Stooges, but he had this image working for him in his head that gave him the character, gave him the mood, gave him the feeling. And it worked. If you ever watch the film, it's called A Time to Die, and I have to tell you, he's magnificent in it. The ending of it got fouled up because I didn't do the ending. But in any event, um, you have to create. You have to create, that's what you're here for. Not so you can write home and say you're an actor in Hollywood. You're here to create. And I have to tell you, the more emphasis you put on creating and developing, when you walk into the audition or whatever, and you've had a script a little bit in advance, <coughs> let me tell you something, they'll see the difference. People say, oh, I never get lucky, I don't get the roles. You don't go in and deliver something. You have to go in and deliver something. Not I do a nice mechanical reading or I'm going to get this commercial because I took the course at Schmuck <laughs> School, okay, on how to audition for a commercial. Wow, and it costs you 400 for three months. For what? If you're an actor and you're creative, you can audition for a commercial, a movie, you can, uh, for a trip to the moon. You're an actor, you bring it in and you deliver, but you gotta know what it is you're asked and what it is you're doing there. And if you understand that, you don't have to say, oh my God, you know, what am I, what, what is somebody looking for? What am I going to bring to this to give it some life? Got it? Okay.